We took two weeks to talk about the first chapter of Mark. We are in Jesus said, when Jesus began his public ministry, Jesus went into the synagogue and he spoke to the people. That was after he had conquered the devil in the desert. And he started preaching the good news. That is Mark's Gospel, chapter 1. After John was arrested, verse 14 and 15. After John had been arrested, that is in the very early stages of Jesus' public ministry, Jesus went into the Galilee and began to preach the good news of God. He said to the people, the time has come. The kingdom of God is at hand. Change your ways and believe the good news. We took that topic for two consecutive weeks. We spoke about change your ways. To imagine that when Jesus began his public ministry, according to Mark's gospel, the first sentence that came out of Jesus' mouth was what? The time, the time has come. The kingdom of God is at hand. Announcement. Injunction. Change your ways. And believe the good news. And like I said to those who came during the month, I said to them, it's amazing that that first sentence of Jesus to the people in Galilee, when he went into Galilee and began preaching, Change your ways. A lot of us are deficient in it. In fact, we don't even know it. We don't even remember that that is, was the first sentence from the Messiah, the Lord, who left heaven to come to earth for our sake. The first sentence, change your ways. The time has come. The kingdom of God is at hand. That's an announcement. That's announcement, proclamation. But to us, addressed directly to us, as an injunction, a first command, he said, change your ways. Many of us have not changed. As we were in the beginning, so we are. But I pray that we will not remain that way forever in the next. Because that will be a curse. Change your ways. Is for every human being. Each one has something that you need to throw away in your life. Each one has something lacking that you need to invite, imbibe, inculcate, and make part of your life. No human being is meant to remain static or stagnant. I know only one who is unchangeable and who can never change. And who can say, I do not change. That person, that being, being, not person, not a human being, that being is the supreme, the most high, Yahweh El Shaddai. As he said to me in one of his messages, I am the Lord. I do not change. He alone does not change. But insofar as you are created by God, you are made. You did not exist from the beginning when there was nothing in existence. And you are not the end of all things. You must change. That's what Jesus is saying. Christ himself, the unchanging and unchangeable that came from heaven. The first thing is you, you are mere human beings. Change your ways. Each one needs to look into himself or herself and discover that area that requires a change because Jesus calls us to change our ways. Change your ways. Therefore, just to bring you up to date with those who come during the week on Thursday prayers, I'll give everyone here a minute only. Only one minute. I took that topic for two weeks. 
talking for two hours, two and a half hours each day for two weeks. But I'm giving you only a few minutes. And I'm giving you one minute now to bow your head and, and think what aspect of my life is Jesus pointing at? Talk to yourself. Don't be thinking of your neighbor that needs a change now. Jesus must be looking at me, an individual. He must be seeing something in me that needs to get out, that needs to change. And it's addressing me, 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 myself, Stella, Agnes, Mary, whatever your name is. He's addressing you personally and pointing at you and saying, Agnes, change your ways. Stella, change your ways. Anthony, change your ways. Thomas, change your way. Looking at this from that point of view, bow your head and tell me that thing that must change to you. Now, because Jesus is pointing at you. Five seconds. Identify what needs to change. That you must change today. That you will not allow to cross that gate and go home with you. When you've identified it, then you stand up and turn it into prayer. Oh Lord, help me to change this, 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 this character in me. To remove this, this, this. Where yeah, I cannot remove it. Almighty God, take it away from me. You may identify more than one. Better still. The quality or a virtue you need to invite. Then begin to invite it. Or else it becomes a dinner for you. It becomes a dinner. It becomes an obstacle to your getting to heaven. You heard what Father said when he preached. The four last things. What did he call them? The four last things. What are they? Death. Judgment. Heaven. Hell. That thing that Jesus is pointing at as he's looking at you now. You didn't come during the month. During the, during the week when we talked about it. Today, I'm reminding you of what we talked about. Those who were here during the month, they have done that exercise. Now you look at it and remember the four last things. Death is coming. Judgment will come. Heaven or hell will surely come. Depending. If you carry forward or delay this change that Jesus is looking at you and pointing and saying, change your way. He's pointing to you. You, you, you. Individual pointing. He's standing there. Pointing at you and saying, change your ways. You don't change it. It becomes an obstacle when those four last things will come. And they will surely come. But I pray that the number four will not come my way. That is hell. This prayer through Christ our Lord. And I begin to thank God for the grace of the moment that has reminded you out of love for God and out of the love God has for you decided to remind us today of what needs to get out before the last day. It is love and mercy bringing this to us. You may discover that for this that you have done today, that this may be your reason to be able to enter heaven. Who knows? It is one day that a human being turns over his life to God. Yes. It takes just one minute of realization of what the obstacle is and that something is wrong. And a sinner repents, bows before God, and becomes a friend of God, and heaven is assured. It takes one day. Who knows if today is the day of your salvation? Though you have been a Christian all your life, today may just be that opening point, opening point, turning point. So give thanks for today. So now, next prayer, begin to say thank you to God. For offering you this opportunity. And I thank him too for offering me the opportunity 
Because as I'm talking to you, I also am identifying what needs to change in my life. There is nobody that does not require change. As long as life exists, we need to change. And you wake up tomorrow, another day, you will still find something that needs to be changed. We keep changing until we become completely transformed into perfect images of God our Father who said to us, Be perfect, for I am perfect. Be holy, for I am holy. Thanksgiving time, give thanks to God for the grace of the moment. We offer our thanksgiving to God for this opportunity, the grace of this moment. For opening our eyes, we say thank you Lord for the privilege to make a change. We say thank you. Some have died without realizing they need a change. Who knows where they are. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So that was the first part of the month that has just gone by. For the second part of the month, we took another passage from the same Mark's Gospel. A reminder for those who were not here. We took another passage. What was the passage, people of God, who were coming for Thursday prayer? What was it? What? Mark chapter 2. What was it about? Are you paralyzed? That was what it was about. We talked about paralysis. We talked about paralysis. From the same Mark's Gospel. Chapter 2. After some days, Jesus returned to Capernaum. And as the news spread that he was at home, so many people gathered that there was no longer room even outside the door. While Jesus was speaking the word to them, some people brought a paralyzed man to him. The four men who carried him could not get near Jesus because of the crowd. So they opened the, the roof above the room where Jesus was and through the hole lowered the man on his mat. When Jesus saw the faith of these people, he said to the paralytic, My son, your sins are forgiven. Some teachers of the law who were sitting there wondered within them, How can, this, how can he speak like this? It is blasphemy. At once, Jesus knew in his spirit what they were thinking and asked, Why do you have such thoughts? Which one is easier? To say to this paralyzed, paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven. Or to say, rise, take up your mat and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, rise, take up your mat and go home. The man rose. And in the sight of all those people, he took up his mat and went home. All of them were astonished and praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like that, like this before. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Again, that was topic for two weeks. Two weeks topic. What I've just read to you. But I'll give it to you in five minutes because I just want you to catch up with us. But that doesn't mean you should be staying at home waiting for videos. Believing that whenever you come, mommy will catch up. My spirit tells me to catch up. Give you what I call catch up lessons. 
so that you're on the same page with those who come during the week today. The question becomes, we go back to the beginning. While Jesus was speaking the word to them, some people brought in a paralyzed man. Paralysis can be of two kinds. In a nutshell, what I said to them. There can be spiritual paralysis. There can be physical paralysis. When in the world somebody has paralysis, we say the person is suffering from what? The person is suffering from what? Stroke. Stroke. You, he cannot move his hands. He cannot move his, or his legs. It can be one leg. It can be the two legs. It can be the whole body. From neck down. It can be paraplegia. It can be hemiplegia. It can be quadriplegia. Quadri. All four limbs paralyzed. I would like us to look at ourselves individually. Though you walked in through the gate, so you say, Mommy or sister, I do not have stroke. I am not paralyzed. But look at yourself well. Are you really moving? Are you really moving? While you may not have physical paralysis and stroke, are you paralyzed spiritually? Are there areas of your life that are paralyzed? And if there are areas that are paralyzed, another question becomes, what is the degree of the paralysis in your life? Is it any pleasure? Hemi, one side. One sided paralysis. Is it quadriplegia? All four. That's complete inability to move or to help yourself, even with your hands or legs. I would like to remind all of us. Of a talk I had given before, either to the Odiches or to people in different areas in the past, I think I've spoken about this to you before, that when I want to look at our lives, I always like to look at what I call four dimensions of our lives. How many dimensions? dimensions. Everybody's life is four dimensional. What did I say? Everybody's life is what? Four dimensional. Just like you take a cross or you take your pen and you draw a cross like this. Make a cross, everyone. Make a cross. Yes. Every cross, you have the vertical and you have the horizontal crossing it. Those are the four dimensions of a person's life. The vertical, the horizontal. When you have crossed it to make a cross, you now have four parts. Above, at the top of the vertical, pointing upward, you have what? You have God. Good. You're looking at God. And that is representing your prayer life, your relationship with God. Down below, southward, you are looking at your social life because it is pointing downward to planet Earth where you are standing. The society in which you live. The world. Your social life. Then, the vertical are like your arms are stretched. On this side, what do you have? You have your work, your study, if you're a student, your means of livelihood or whatever it is that you care for. And on the other hand, you have what? 
family, friends, and what I call significant others. What do I call them? Significant others. Each of these four dimensions of a person's life, they flow one to another. If any aspect of these four dimensions is not balanced, something is wrong. If any of the four dimensions I've just mentioned, because there you are, right in the middle of the four dimensions, like somebody hanging on a cross. If any of the four dimensions is found wanting, something is wrong. And all the others will be lopsided. Your life cannot be balanced. You can't live a balanced life. Because they are tied to one another in the end. Anybody who decides to neglect the upper vertical that points to heaven, which is God, the rest of that cross, all other aspects of your life will suffer it. Because of lack of connectivity to the eternal from which you came and to which you will return. They're disconnected. From the supreme being who orders all things mightily, something will be wrong. All other dimensions will suffer. The social, your work, and family, friends, and significant others will suffer. If you are connected to God and your social life the lower vertical, vert vertical line point is found deficient. Your social life. You are disconnected from the world. You think you can live like in a, on an island. Make an island and stay there alone. Whereas you are still on planet Earth. Then something is wrong. Before you know where you are, you'll be in Professor Lambo's unit or at Arrow. Because no man is an island. Even though you are praying, something will be wrong. Because even when Jesus came, he came into our world and became part of us. And we know how he lived on earth. He was connected to the Father and connected to the earth and did what he had to do. He did not isolate himself. He prayed when he had to pray and connected to humanity when he had to. Now, you look at the horizontal. We take the left horizontal first. Which I call what? Your work. Your what? Means of livelihood. Or if you're a student, or you have a book to read, your studies. If something is wrong with your work, your means of livelihood. And meanwhile, you are connected to the upper vertical, which is God. They are connected to society. Very, very connected. But this other one is wrong. Something is wrong with it. And it's suffering. Are you balanced? Will you be alright? If your business is not moving, your study is not moving, your work is not moving, and you are making a mess of it, then every other thing is in a mess, even though you are praying. Because from the left vertical flows to the right vertical, which is your family and friends and significant others. If you are not working, see, this side will suffer. What will they, what will they eat? What will, what will happen to family and friends? What will happen to the social? Where you need to be committed to and to contribute your quota to the world. If the left the right vertical is also deficient, which is what? Family, friends, significant others. And you say, I don't need any family. I don't need to have friends. I nobody is significant in my life. I, I, I can live it. If something is wrong on that side, automatically, something will be wrong with the social. When you close from work, let's see where you are going. You enter your house, lock yourself. Eh? What a life. 
When you are sick, let's see who will carry you to the hospital. Etc. Etc. So we are saying that our lives are what? Four dimensional. And every aspect of our life, the four dimensions, are very, very important. And must be balanced. And connected. To make the complete you. Because you are the one in the center. For a balanced spirituality, a balanced social life, a balanced family life, a balanced working life, and etc. And for you to remain balanced and happy, you need the four dimensions. Therefore, back to the, what I was trying to explain. The paralyzed man. They brought Jesus a paralyzed man. And I'm saying, you will tell me, my people of God, that I'm not paralyzed. Me, I don't have stroke. I would like you to examine your life. Maybe one of these aspects of your life is paralyzed. And you need to get to Jesus for healing. It could be your spiritual life. Relationship with God. Is it a life? Is it suffering from stroke? Is your relationship with Jesus crippled, paralyzed? For many people, it is paralyzed. They can't move spiritually. They can't move. Long ago, it should have been one more day. one said, can you can't get closer to Jesus. Just stay there. Stagnated. Unable to move nearer to God. Vertically. That's the vertical up. Totally in a state of paralysis. And you are sitting down there, not even knowing. At least this other paralyzed man they brought, he, he, he knew he was paralyzed, I believe, for him to have allowed his friends to bring him to the Lord. Some of us are paralyzed. And don't even know we are paralyzed. And as we need people, we need help. For somebody to bring us nearer to God. Or that we need to do something about it. Are you paralyzed? Or is it your family relationship? Relationship with the significant others that is paralyzed. You see, I told you that paralysis can be hemiplegia or quadriplegia or paraplegia. It may be one whole side paralyzed. It may be the four. Then you are suffering from what I call what? Quadriplegia. Even though your physical body is moving. If all four areas, all the four dimensions I've just mentioned, are paralyzed, then that is a case of what? Quadriplegia in, in, the, in the psychic and spiritual realms. Four-sided paralysis. We need to examine ourselves today before I move on to what I want to say today to all of you. Check yourselves. What aspect of my life is paralyzed? Is it my work? Some are paralyzed on this other side. The left vertical. The left uh, horizontal, rather. The one that has to do with work, progress in studies, or whatever, uh -huh, or your business. Sort of livelihood. Some people are stagnant. And have been stagnant for years. Suffering paralysis in that aspect of their life. Unable to move forward. Unable to move forward financially. Unable to move forward academically. Unable to move forward. No promotion, no progress. And don't just know what to do. And are just sitting down there. Maybe you need help of four good friends. In the story of the paralyzed man, who brought him to Jesus? Who? 
four men, four good friends. Maybe they were relations or friends, we don't know. But four people, that's where you need social life. If you didn't have those people where related with, well with them, they will not take the pain and the trouble of bringing him to Jesus. And even when they met the place crowded, they were determined to help him. Either he's their friend or brother, determination, out of love. When he could not help himself, others helped him. And when they could not find a way, they made a way through the roof. If there be any area of paralysis in your life, are you allowing help to come to your aid? Something, somebody to lift you nearer to God or to help you to break through the area of that paralysis and receive the divine grace from God to be able to move forward in whatever that aspect of paralysis may be. How do we recognize the spiritually paralyzed? I told them that was phase two, another week or the same week. Phase two, we took it in phases. Number one, are you paralyzed? Number two, do you know you are paralyzed? When people are paralyzed, they don't know that they are paralyzed. What are the signs and symptoms of somebody who is suffering from paralysis and does not know? Remember the point of view from which I'm talking about paralysis now. Am I talking about physical paralysis of your body? I have looked around when I was singing praise and I went up and down dancing and praising God. I didn't see anybody suffering from stroke here. Physical bodily stroke. So you know that I'm not talking about stroke of the body. I'm talking about something else. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yes. Ask yourself. If you are paralyzed in this type of what I'm talking about, inner paralysis, interior paralysis, are you even aware you are paralyzed? Some are paralyzed and they don't know. What are the signs of, and symptoms of people who are paralyzed and they don't know that they are paralyzed? Who can tell me? When you are paralyzed, you don't even know. Oh, you are sitting down there. Hello? Hi. What are the signs and symptoms? Eh? Some people are just, you just notice that they are lazy, they can't move themselves. Even to pray is a problem. Go to work, Kosisha. Do business. Multitry, yeah, Kosisha. And they give up. They're sitting down there. No money. Any Antibobile, ah, run JJ. And when you're under one for have you heard that kind of thing before? Now people are donating, they're giving us. And you're sitting down there. You have Lego, you have hand, you have eye. Ojo Kosile, people are contributing. It's our neighbors, they are helping me. Somebody, some of them say, My brother abroad is sending me money. And my senior sister promised to help me. And today, whenever I go to her, she will not answer me. I say, eh, and then? And? Was your senior sister born to carry you? Does she not have her own family? Or senior brother? They will even be quarreling with the brother. He has money, but he's not helping me. When I go to his house, he will, will tell me he has traveled. We are just suffering. All the members of my family, nobody is helping me. They keep telling tales of who and sitting down there. They are paralyzed. You are paralyzed if you are that person. Pray. You cannot pray. Go to mass. You cannot go. Even run and book mass. Even if you don't have money to book mass. Go to mass. To the nearest church. Seek God. Mm -mm. Move yourself. Do something. To alleviate the poverty in your life. Mm -mm. You just sit down there telling stories of woes. Kawe. Mm -mm. Make 
Okay, move. Go back. Paralysis. You're paralyzed. The devil has paralyzed you. Or you paralyze yourself. I don't know which one it is. All I know is that you are paralyzed. No progress. Stand still. I'm making no effort. But like I told some people, I said sometimes, paralysis, you may be trying, but you will not move. And I gave an example of somebody related to me who had a stroke. And I remember saying to the person when I went to see him, I said, try, move this leg. Because I'm like, ah, this leg is looking very well and healthy. Why is it not moving? I said, try, move the leg. Come and see. He tried. <laughs> but leg refused to move. Some of us are in that state. Yeah, you try, try, try. Kosheshi. You push, push, push. It's not moving. My beloved in Christ. You will need to be carried to Jesus. You will need to go to Jesus. Oh, if you are in that state. Either you are sitting because you can't even move. Or you are trying and still you are not moving. You need deliverance. You will need Jesus the Savior. You will need to find a way to the Lord. Even if you have to go through the roof. Find a way to the Messiah. Something is wrong somewhere. And when Jesus saw the paralyzed man when they brought him down, the first thing he said was what? Your sins are forgiven. Jesus looked beyond the physical paralysis. He looked into the soul. He could see something was the obstacle. Something was causing it. So he attacked the issue from the spiritual to the outside. From internal to external. Sometimes what is paralyzing our lives is beyond what the eye can eh, see. You will need the Savior to come into the situation and to say, your sins are forgiven. And then from there, he will now say what? Arise, pick up your mat and go home. And you will just find that that effort you've been making since that didn't work. If you start working, the man now jumped up, took up his mat, and went home. People were surprised. A change came upon him. Back to chapter 1 where he said change your ways. A change came upon the paralyzed man. When Jesus entered into the situation of his life, there was a change. The effort he had been making to move himself and did not succeed. With Jesus in it, he was able to move. He took the master just one sentence. Arise, pick up your mat go home. He jumped up. He picked up his mat and he went home. And forever after, he kept walking. The stroke was gone. Paralysis gone forever. May Almighty God come into the situations of our lives. May he effect the change even where we are not able to change the situation. May he remove the stroke where we have been struggling, doing physiotherapy at home, it didn't work. Let God come and do something and command us, arise, take up your palate and go. But before that, what was the first thing? Your sins are forgiven. We are very lucky to have our reverend fathers in the Catholic Church. The sacrament of reconciliation is there. Where you will hear that same sentence that Jesus pronounced over the paralytic. Before then, Chota Pharisees and others are saying, ha, 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 ha. Who is he to say this? Why should he say this? But Jesus knew it was necessary to forgive the sin first. Some of us need to go to that sacrament of reconciliation where you will hear Jesus through his ministers pronounce what? Your sins are forgiven. Step one. And then, arise, pick up your pallet, go home. And the battle is over. 
Whatever the source of the bathroom may be, we don't care. We don't care to know now what caused the stroke. Because some people sit down there making noise. It is the witch. It is the wizard. It is the this. It is that. It may be witch. It may be wizard. It may not be. We don't care. It may even be your own laziness. It may be your stubbornness. It may be. We don't know what it is. So I don't want to judge. That's not my concern. Mine is to tell you that you need the intervention of Jesus in your life to remove whatever area of paralysis is existing in your life. And I want to tell you that if you look well, very few of us are free from paralysis. Two of us. True. By the time you examine the four dimensions of your life that I've just told you, the four dimensions of a person's life that I've just mentioned, when you examine them thoroughly, you will discover pockets of paralysis. It's not total. I call you to pray. As I gave them, I gave you one minute to pray for change in chapter one. I take you to prayer to Master Jesus. Turn to Jesus. Stand up. Stand up, everybody. This time around, I want you to stretch your hands. Why do I say stretch your hand? That paralytic, they did something. They made an effort to reach Jesus. And the only effort I'm telling you to make right now is just stretch your hand. You don't need to go through any roof. Jesus is in our midst today. He's here. Wanting to heal us, wanting to set us free, wanting to remove the strokes and the paralysis in various areas of our lives, wanting to remove the blindness that is even making us not to know that we are paralyzed. Just stretch your hand to Jesus the healer who is in our midst. That's why we are here this night. We didn't come here to look at the walls of the compound. We are here to meet with the Lord. And that Lord that you came to meet this night is the same Jesus that said to the paralyzed man, get up, take up your pallet. And he began to walk. He can say the same to you this night. Yes. Amen? Yes. Can he not? Yes. Can he say the same to you this night? Yes. Reach out. Reach out. They reached out to Jesus through the roof. You reach out by just stretching your hand. And call Jesus into the areas you have identified as needing to be loosened. To be set free from the bondage of palsy, paralysis. And let him say, your sins are forgiven. Let him say, arise and walk. And you will experience a new freedom within you immediately. You will experience a freedom, a lightness. Things will just fall into place. Things will begin to move like the paralytic. There will be spiritual connectivity with God. There will be reconciliation with family. There will be breakthrough in business. Because don't forget what the Bible said. If the Lord does not build a house, the builders labor in vain. Could it be that you have been laboring on your own without God in your work? Could that be why your work is paralyzed? And your studies not moving? Come to him who alone can build and make him the cornerstone. Put him into it. Riches and wealth comes from God. Come to God. Some of us want to progress in holiness. We just can't. Struggle, struggle, struggle. Oh, oh, oh. 
Something is wrong. Come to Jesus. Whichever type of paralysis is it, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Let him see that you made an effort. You're being here for this night video. I can call it that effort, isn't it? At least you left home. You are here. You've made an effort. But don't come for nothing. Tell him. See me, Lord. I'm, I'm paralyzed. I need to move forward in life. I need to move spiritually. I need to move. I want to walk. I want to run. <sighs> May the power of the Most High God meet each one of us at the exact point of need yeah. that will come out of this paralysis. Yeah. Be it for the pleasure or hemiplegia or paraplegia yeah. of the inner being. God Almighty set us free. Yeah. Command us to arise. Yeah. To pick up and move. Yeah. That we may no longer be carried I have brought you up to date with the teachings of July that you missed for those who don't come on Thursdays. Now, I give you the chapter for today. For this particular night video, we have a chapter to, to read, part of a chapter, and that is Luke's Gospel. So we take Luke's Gospel chapter 12, and we look at 22 to 26. We're looking at 22 to 20 what? 26. Hold on. Let me see. No, no, no. We are looking at 22 to... Okay, 22 to 40. Ready? Luke chapter 12, 22 to 40. That chapter speaks for itself. Let us write. Do not, do not worry. Let us rise. When we read gospel, we stand up in PLD. Please, in case you're a stranger and you're wondering why she's saying, let us rise. We are Catholics in the church. You don't sit down for gospel reading. Then Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, not to worry about your life, what you are to eat, nor about your body, what you are to wear, for your life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds, they neither sow nor reap, they have no storehouses, and no bands. Yes, God feeds them. How much more important are you than they? Which of you, for all his worrying, can add a day to his life? And if you are not able to control such a small thing, why do you worry about the rest? Look at the white flowers how they grow. They do not spin or weave. Yes, I tell you, 
Even Solomon, with all his wealth, was not clothed as one of these. But if God so clothed the grass and the feet, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you? What little faith you have. As for you, do not set your heart on what you are to eat and drink. Stop worrying. Let all the nations of the world run after these things. Your father knows that you need them. Seek rather the kingdom of God, and this thing will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock. For it has pleased your father to, keep, to give you the kingdom. Sell what you have and give arms. Get yourself forces that do, not, that do not wear out. And make safe investment with God. Where no thief comes and no moth destroys. For where your investments are, there will your heart be also. Be ready, dress for service, and keep your lamps lit. Like people waiting for their master to return from the wedding. As soon as he comes and knocks, they will open to him. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds wide awake when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will put on an apron and have them sit at table, and he will wait on them. Blessed are those servants, if he finds them awake when he comes at midnight or daybreak. Pay attention to this. If the master of the house had known at what time the thief would come, he would, he would not have let him break into his house. So also, so you also must be ready, for the Son of Man will come at an hour you do not expect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to Lord Jesus Christ. What a beautiful reading. Don't you think so? Yes. That's beautiful. Coming straight from the mouth of Jesus, my beloved Jesus. You see your beloved? Yes. Do you love him? Yes. Do you love him like I love him? Yes. Or oh, you love him more than I do? Yes. Your own cannot pass my own. I love you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. We love him, don't we? And it's always so beautiful to hear him talking. I must confess, each time I hear words that are coming straight from the mouth of the Lord, like this one, it just does something to my heart. It makes my heart, how they say it? Oh, bina so mo pali pali. Yes. It's beautiful when you think, who is talking? Who is saying all these nice, all these things? It is the Lord, Jesus himself. This is not a question of, uh, uh, and St. Paul said, or Peter. They, those ones, they spoke what the Holy Spirit put in their mouth. That's okay. But more beautiful still to hear Jesus. The eternal word himself, the God, the God, the God, the very God, speaking direct. Wow. My dear people, that reading, very simple. The three last things, and the four last there, things. Death, judgment, heaven, or hell. Incidentally, we showed the Odiches a video today. I hope you watched it because I left you and went. 
Were you able to look at it? You didn't look at it? What happened? Huh? Ah, you will look at it too. Ah, you will look at it tomorrow morning. You know, we are finishing our program around 8 or 9. So, we are going to look at it. Very vital. We will not, I'm not going to let the devil take it from you. Yes, it's because of uh, phone reaction. We had to move it from here. And I know what we'll do. You just watch it on a laptop. Put the laptop on a um, on table and uh, where you, everybody can see and hear what he is saying. Because that video is, called, is titled what? Heaven and Hell, ratio 1 to 1,000. From a man that was dying and he saw himself in heaven, but God pitied him and sent him back to come and tell us what his eyes saw. <laughs> They call it near death experience. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And it, it's like this thing we're talking about. If you know the hour, when the, if somebody knows the hour, when what? You will not do what? If anybody knows at what hour the thief would come, you will not let him break into your house. You must stand ready. For the Son of Man will come at an hour you do not expect. So beautiful words. And together we can sing. Speak them over again to me. Wonderful words of love. Speak them over again to me. Wonderful words of love. Words of love and beauty. Teach me faith and duty. Beautiful words. Wonderful words. Wonderful words of love. Beautiful words. Wonderful words. Beautiful words of love. Go. Sing. Uh, you don't know it, eh? What do you know? You only know how to dance kokoma. In fact, I'm singing one of these jazz that they sing and you are all jumping and shaking body. You will know it. You better learn this one. Speak them over again to me. Wonderful words of love. Go. Speak them over again to me. Wonderful words of love. Words of love and beauty. Teach me faith and duty. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of love. Beautiful words, wonderful words. Wonderful words of love. Poor Fortunello, she's the only one that knows it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So let's look at it very briefly. Point one in that passage. Then Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, not to worry about your life. Who is talking? Jesus. What did he say? Not to worry about your life. Please clap for him, Joe. <laughs> if you ask me, Selamari is standing here. That's exactly what I need to hear. I just need to hear those words. Especially at this time. Worry, worry, thinking, thinking. Is that not a disease that many of us suffer? Yes. Carry all the problems in the family, put on our head. We go, sir. Amen. Then, as if, the, first of all, carry all your own, the one you can solve and the one you cannot solve. Carry put for where? Carry put for head. Are you looking at the basket? Just picture. The, the, what I'm creating in, in your mind now. Basket. 
Is basket heavy? No. Basket is light. First of all, you carry basket, you put for head. Then you collect all the problems in your own personal life. The real one and the one that is not real. Sometimes you begin to imagine that you have problem. Could it be that I have ulcer? Could it be that it is arthritis? Could it be that it is diabetes? No doctor has diagnosed it, too, but you just imagine it. You carry it, you put inside basket. Boom. Ibu. It don't start. After carrying all your own and putting on your head, then you now go. Carry that of all your children. The one that is within your power to solve and the one that is not within your power. You carry them. You put inside the basket. How many Ibu don't there, Diana? How many load? What do you mean, low? It depends on how many children you have. If you have seven children, seven problems. You put them on your head. Making how many? It's already getting heavier. Then you will now go to extended family. I know what I'm talking about. You all come here for counseling, so I know you. Okay, thank you, Jerry. Somebody reminded me that. Make a, somebody is saying, don't go too far. Husband, the hair, the one right beside you. Then you carry all your husband's problem that he has in the office with you, Saga. We no concern you. You carry your husband's own, his health issues, his work issues, his this, that. You carry, you add. You become how many? Ibu? Eru? Odimelo? Then, I said that's not enough. Then they will come here. They'll come and say, eh, you know how we do counseling. What do you want God to do for you? After praying to the Holy Spirit. What do you want God to do for you? Mommy, there is no peace in my husband's family. <laughs> I will say, inside me, I know not talk. I will say, eh? No one knows where she's going. Not that there is no peace between you and your husband. Not that there is no peace between you and your children. Husbands, there is no peace in my husband's family. Family. That side, lay, lay, lay. Oh, oh yeah. In fact, your name is Adimeru. That's all I can tell you. You are a real one. Madi. Just be. Just carry. It's as if you're looking for Wahala. You will never, you have not finished solving the one in your body. The one with your children. The one, you have gone. Not even your own biological family. Now you go. There is no peace in my husband's family. Fam, your husband's family, Lee, Lee. Long, long. Eh? You have, where do you want to start? You are the, where do, how do you want to go to that level? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, Dake Kerera. You're not even looking for a small pal palava. Your husband's family. And what is happening in that their family over there? You want to solve that one too? You, small wife, who they married yesterday. Where do you want to put your mouth? Why you worry? When you can pray, tell Jesus who is the way. Don't be a doubting Thomas. Rely upon his promise. Why worry, 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 worry? When you can pray, why worry? When you can pray, tell Jesus. Who is the way? Don't be a doubting Thomas. Rely upon his promise. Why worry, 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 you can pray. That's all Jesus is saying today. Do not worry about your life. He said don't worry about your life. And you are worrying about your children's life, your husband's life, and 
family's life. As many as they are in their family. What can you do about it? That's why I said beautiful words of love. These words are words of love. Because all the hypertension we are suffering, it's coming from worry. And from hypertension, diabetes comes in. From hypertension, cardiac problems arise. That's heart problems. Hyper from giving ourselves high blood pressure, just carrying a dimeru, kamadi, didi, babari, tamagbe, atunlo, si, family in-laws, and car collects and put. I think your name is Mrs. Worry. You are looking for something to worry about. If not, what's your problem? And a song says, One day at a time, sweet Jesus. That's all I'm asking of you. So help me today. Show me the way one day at a time. So if you want to know how not to worry, that song is the solution. Take one day at a time. Take one day at a time. Take one day at a time. Even Jesus taught us in the Lord's Prayer, what did he say? Give us this day our daily bread. This day. This day. The reason we worry and worry and develop sickness and then the sickness will now become spirit of devourer in our lives and begin to chop our money in the hospital and with medicine. Drinking, drinking. So the poverty now increases and the worry doubles. It's a vicious circle. Jesus gave us words of love. Don't worry. That don't worry is a powerful one. If only you and I will learn to just listen to the wonderful statement of love for the night and go home, dropping all your worries at his feet. You will find that a lot of the headaches you are having, illnesses you are suffering from, the poverty we are suffering from, will suddenly disappear. Because worry is, a, is that disease that is bringing the devourer into our lives. Sleep this night. You don't sleep. You wake up, your BP goes up. You wake up because you didn't sleep. Your work is affected. You can't focus because of lack of sleep. You are worried you cannot eat. Ulcer enters. Just think of the number of things that worry can cause. And you start thanking Jesus for telling us today, don't worry. Then he further went on to something that I love at the end. He said, your father wants to give you the kingdom. That same place where he was telling us that, see the birds of the air, they neither turn nor spin, see how they are fed, see the lilies, how beautiful. Then he ended up saying, he said, your father wants to give you the kingdom. When I read that, I said, ah, come on. This, like, this sentence has been missing from my ear each time I read that passage. I think I'm seeing that for the first time today. That, that, that phrase is inside that passage about don't worry. Your father wants to give you the kingdom. I know eh, it just hit me bow today. It's like telling me, Stella Maris, see, your father has greater plans for you. See, you little girl, that they want to give a whole kingdom. And you are worrying about food and dress. Do you understand what I'm saying? The way he smoke, he put in that statement. In the middle of, don't worry, see the birds of the air, see this, see that, see the lilies. Then he said, your father wants to give you, your heavenly father wants to give you the kingdom. Huh? It just struck me that. It's like telling me, what's wrong with you? See who they want to give kingdom. You know the meaning of kingdom? See the big plan that God has. Kingdom. And you are here talking about food. Talking about clothes. I suddenly realized my stupidity. And I hope you realize yours. So you don't tell me that I am very stupid. Their plan, Papa is planning king, no even of kingdom. 
Not estate, though. Not estate. Not house. Not a city of Ibadan for me to give me. He's planning to. Your father wants to give you what? The kingdom. 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 They want to give you a kingdom. And you are here like chicken. Do you understand what I mean like chicken? Looking for food on the ground. When the kingdom is in front of you. In that kingdom, everything is, is contained. And you refuse. And you are scratching the ground. Like a deer. Looking for, for ants to eat. But the kingdom is what Papa wants to give you. It just suddenly dawned on me that I must be very stupid, very trivial, very, very, very witty. In fact, I think my head is not correct. People of God, our Father wants to give us the kingdom. And we are sitting here worrying about trivial things of the world. Like food. The person that can give you kingdom, can you not see that food is kekere to him? The one that is planning kingdom for you, can't you see that I shall lash on to lash on? It is nothing to him. Someone who is anxious to give you kingdom. What you are worried about is nothing. In, to him. My dear people, let us realize our foolishness, our stupidity, our short-sightedness, our blindness, our narrow-mindedness today. And just package all the worries in our hearts, even if it's about our life. What did he say? If you worry till tomorrow, you can't add one day to your life. And that is talking to all of us, myself inclusive. Especially those of us who have health issues. Because our greatest fear is death. Am I correct? Yes. <laughs> Everybody say yes. Death. Yes. Uh, Everybody is afraid. Once you go and see doctor, you know how our doctors are? They will. I always say that the day you go to the hospital, you're in trouble. Because from that day, they will test everything, diagnose, they must find something, sir. And from that day, you start spending money. You start spending. Expenditure begins. And then, worry doubles. Because by the time they tell you what's wrong with you, your heart will just issue you. You will think you are going to die tomorrow. Fear of death is real. But Jesus is bringing a loving message today. What did he say? He said, my dear, listen, be reasonable. That's what he's telling us. Let's reason together. If you worry till tomorrow, even about that your health and about your life, you cannot add one day. In other words, the day everybody will leave this world is already decreed. It's already written down by God. You will not die unless the day has come. That's what Jesus is saying. That by worrying about your life, you cannot add what? One day. If you can't add one day, that means when that day comes, it has come. Even if the person is not sick, the person can just collapse. Or something will go wrong when the bell rings. Hmm. So, what was the point in worrying about even the life? Will I be alive tomorrow? Will I not be alive tomorrow? Am I dying? Am I not dying? Am I going to die? Am I not going to die? And then they frighten you in the hospital. They give you diagnosis. They, they tell you it is this. They tell you it is that. If the time has not come, somehow, somehow, you will overcome that sickness. Amen? Amen. 
If the time has not come, somehow, somehow, you will pull through. Something will happen. Either by divine intervention or maybe just one little thing you will drink and you are fine. Or even just sleep, wake up, the pain is gone. Because the time has not come. But when the time comes, if you like, worry till tomorrow. That day written in the book of God in heaven, once it clocks that day and that particular hour, oh Lord, in here, now go. So, why worry? And just give yourself high blood pressure and make life uncomfortable for yourself the little time you should be enjoying. People of God, everybody, you're going to go eat. What can I talk? Go and eat. Go and sleep. Get about your work and be happy with the Lord. Realizing that there's really nothing to worry about. Our Father is planning a kingdom. kingdom. Don't stay here worrying about small, small things. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, first point. Don't worry. Second point. Our Father is planning kingdom for us. And then, what's the next point? The next point, what did he say? Be ready. Though he has told you, don't worry about your life. But he did not tell you not to be ready. He emphasized, be ready. Don't worry about things. Don't worry about your life. Because you can't add one day. But, all the same, emphasis for the Lord. Because you see, all the others were, don't, don't, don't. Don't worry. Don't do this. Don't do this. This one now is on a positive note. Be ready. Injunction. Command. And don't say you didn't hear it. So don't go home and say, he has said don't worry. You start eating, enjoying, drinking, forget yourself. Uh -uh. He said, be ready. Stand ready because you don't know the hour. That's why I said they are beautiful words. Words of love. Words of wisdom. Don't worry, but just be ready. Do not be afraid. Just be ready. How to be ready becomes the next thing. How do we become ready? Hello? Hello? The Lord says, be ready. Don't let that day overtake you like a, a thief. He has said, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief will come, he will not leave his door open. How are you going to be ready? So that day will not take you by surprise. And maybe when your soul is already going, before you realize that, hey, 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 I'm not ready. When it is too late. I told you this. The revelation I got. Did I not share with you those who came during the month? I shared with you the revelation about the, the, the mansions above. And how I just suddenly saw the earth disappear. And the new, I found that I was standing on a new, uh, uh, new, uh, new ground. And all, everything on earth vanished. And it was just high, high, tall mansions in front of me. Everybody, you just move to your own room if you have a room there. And if you have not prepared, you have no room there. Finish. Nothing you can do about it. Too late. I shared that with some of you. I shared it three years ago when it was revealed. I shared it last year. I've shared it again. Stand ready. How do we get ready, everybody? This side, how? Here, how do you get ready? Eh? He told us, and we talked about it, Mark chapter 1, change your ways. Change your ways. How do you stand ready? Number two, come out of your paralysis. Move to the Lord. It's all following on each other. Change your ways. Change your ways. 
Number two, come out of what is holding you, that paralysis, that is not letting you get nearer to God. Arise. Pick up. Pick up. Move. Move. Climb the ladder of holiness. Rise and walk in the path of what? Walk in the path of righteousness. Follow his rules and regulations. Arise. As the song says, arise, come to your God. You know, let's arise. Move. Go to Jesus. Let him set us free from what is holding us down. That's part of getting ready. Acknowledge your need of him. Make every effort, even if you have to pass through the roof like the paralytic, to meet Jesus. Tell him, I need you. I want heaven. And he will lead your feet into the path that leads to heaven. And that's the solution. Worrying about it, whether you are dying or not, is not going to solve the problem. Worrying about what to eat cannot bring the food. Get out of your paralysis. Come to Jesus. The rich young man came. Master, what must I do to inherit the kingdom? Jesus said, you know the laws. Go and do them. Come to Jesus. Obey his laws. Do whatever he tells you. Live in his favor. Live in his will. Like the fish inside the ocean. Let God be the ocean of our lives. Where you just swim in and out of him. Don't try to be like fish out of water. Be the fish inside water. And that water, that ocean, is God. The ocean of God's will. Where his will is your water, his will is your food, his will is your oxygen, like the fish. His will is everything. The fish swims in the water, in the ocean, or in the river. It drinks the water. It poops inside the water. It urinates inside the water. It gets its air inside the water. It sleeps under the water. It never leaves the water. The day the fish leaves the water, it will uh, die. Let all of us become fish in the ocean that is God. Let's live in God. So when that day comes, you will be found inside God, not outside God. Nothing to worry about. That kingdom he wants to give, as he has promised, your father wants to give you the kingdom. You've got it. Straight away. No bargaining. No maka maka about it. No long story. Because you'll be found in him. Very simple as ABC. Living in God's will is the solution to the problem. Like fish in an ocean that never comes out of the water, knowing that if I come out, I will die. The fish is wise. The fish doesn't come out of water. It knows that if it comes out, we die. Only we human beings think we can live outside God. Let us go back. Pick up your mat. Arise. The man picked up his mat and he went home. Home for us is what? Heaven. Heaven. Pick up your mat. Arise. Pick up your mat and go home. Amen.